Today we have a little bit of company drama involving Rapid7 Ford and Nahemsek. So let's check it out. This video is sponsored by Hextree.io. If you are a developer or a student and you want to learn more about IT security, be it web hacking, reverse engineering, hardware hacking or whatever, we are creating courses over at Hextree.io. So please check it out. So this story starts with a video by Nahem Sek, API hacking with JetGPT. It's a pretty neat video. He uses JetGPT to basically generate some word lists and API paths that he then later uses with a huge list of subdomains to then find a Swagger files. Swagger files are basically API documentation, usually used by developers to you know, document the different API endpoints that exist. As a hacker or bug bounty hunter, these Swagger files are of course interesting because now you save a lot of time instead of having to deer brood all the different API paths, you basically just have the documentation on what exists. And in this video, Nahemsek used Ford as an example because they also have a public bug bounty program. And bug bounties usually give you a safe harbor, so as long as you don't act maliciously, um, you probably are fine. But then Nahemsek posted this tweet. Rapid7 is asking me to remove an educational content from YouTube over the fact that used them as an example for publicly accessible Swagger file. And here's the email. Hello, Rapid7 is an international cyber intelligence provider. We serve as an agent for our client to identify and neutralize active cyber threats that endanger their brand, customers and employees. As the legal representative of Ford Motors, Ford.com, we request the immediate takedown of this video. This video directly threatens our client by using their name and identifiers. It operates illegally and is active in aiding criminals in their fraudulent activities. We request that you remove the video as soon as possible. We appreciate your assistance in handling this matter. There were of course lots of reactions. Here John Hammond with a good Yikes. But also Daniel Cuthbert wrote that this is odd given that the company has a bug bounty program which is public as you said and this is all public information already published on yeah, YouTube. And Corbin Leo also very experienced bug hunter and hacker. Wow, don't comply. <laughs> Some other people were arguing well blur the domains, why you know expose them. But Nahemsek has a really good point. He's responding to that. Domains I found using similar services to Rapid7's Project Sonar. So what is Project Sonar by Rapid7? Let's have a look here on the website. Gaining insight into global exposure. Project Sonar started in September and the goal is to improve security through the active analysis of public networks. While the first few months focused almost entirely on SSL, DNS and HTTP enumeration, the discoveries and insights derived from these data sets, especially around blah, 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 blah. So basically Project Sonar is actively scanning and scraping the whole internet, being DNS names and you know associated IP addresses, HTTP server, and probably doing full port scans as well. They just contact all over the internet and collect this data. This means Project Sonar does basically exactly what Nahemsek did in his video. The subdomain enumeration, for example, is something that Project Sonar is doing as well. So Ford is a client of Rapid7 and Rapid7 has a product where they, you know, figure out all the exposed stuff from their customers and Nahemsek found a subdomain that exposed a Swagger file. I don't know, seems fair game to me. Now, here's the thing. Exposing a Swagger file is not really a security issue because the Swagger file just defines all the the different API endpoints. The implementation of your API endpoints, they now have to be secure. Now it's true that a Swagger file does help the attacker because it saves a lot of time, but so it also helps um, bug hunters that do uh, legit work. It helps to identify all the API endpoints that you can then test. This way you can make sure you don't miss anything during testing. I think it improves a lot the bug bounty impact. Imagine how low some bug bounty amounts are, like $50, a hundred dollars, maybe five hundred dollars or so, and then you have hundreds or maybe thousands of bug hunters trying to find all the different API endpoints, all of them running scanners and dealbusters trying to figure out all these different paths. 
provide them a basic swagger file and none of this has to be done. So the bug hunters as well as the evil hackers they now have access to the swagger file but hopefully because the bug hunters have access to it as well they can also make sure that all the endpoints are implemented correctly. And the basic principle behind this is something that we can take from cryptography because there exists the Kerkhoff's principle. The Kerkhoff's principle of cryptography was stated by a cryptographer in the 19th century. The principle holds that a crypto system should be secure even if everything about the system except the key is public knowledge and this can be adapted to web security as well. You know there are open source web applications basically the full source code and all the API endpoints and basically all the swagger files are public already and you still want this to be secure. So you should always operate under this principle that the attacker knows even all your source code or at least knows all the API endpoints and even if they know that now you have to make sure your API is secure and it's it's perfectly fine to assume that the attacker does not have a valid key. For example, they don't have the password or the session tokens of other users or the admin user or whatever it is, but they know all the endpoints. As a security researcher, when auditing client applications and you know thinking about the threat model, this is definitely something I have in mind. Usually, while I might mention it in a report, or oh, there are some exposed stack traces, there the attacker can get some information about the underlying system and so forth. I might mention that, but generally my my opinion is that these are not security issues. It can obviously help with a little bit defense in depth, making it harder. But if you have a public bug bounty program and you want hackers to hack on there, I feel like you should be actually a lot more open. Anyway, Nahemsek was thinking about how to deal with it and thought about recreating the whole video with notfort.com. Then I suggested Fnord. Uh, maybe it's also something more known in the German hacking community. I'm not so sure, but I did find an English uh, Wikipedia article. And Fnord is a word that has been used in news group and hacker culture to indicate irony, humor and surrealism. And if there isn't a better matching word, I don't know. So if anything, Nahemsek should definitely re-record the video with fnord.com. But to be honest, I think Nahemsek should definitely not remove that video. I think this is a mistake by Rapid7. I feel like something like this would set a bad precedence and I'm in full support of Nahemsek for not taking down this video and helping in whatever way I can if it would ever get into any trouble. This happened a few days ago, so so I did ask him if there were any updates yet, but so far he hasn't heard anything back. So hopefully the situation just resolved and it was maybe just an automatic email or something like this. I don't know. I hope this was interesting to you. If you want to see more videos, they are linked over here. And if you want to learn hacking yourself, check out our courses over at hextree.io.